All right, so we're going to continue on with our kind of setup material, getting into vector calculus. Um, we're, we're almost ready to start talking about integration of vector fields. This is where we're getting to. Uh, we're going to eventually get to integrating vector fields over both curves and then eventually surfaces. And then we're going to look at a number of theorems that try to tie everything together. But before we can get to integrating vector fields, we have to talk about what a vector field is. Um, so the basic idea here is that you're, you're thinking of vector fields as a function. And you're thinking of a function as, well, we'll distinguish between R2 and R3. So in R2, you're looking at something like this. So let's say f of x, y. And you might write this as, say, p of x, y times i and q of x, y times j, where p and q, so this p and q, these are just functions, right? Real valued functions. Um, generally, we're going to assume that they're um, differentiable, so C1, C2, usually at least C2. Um, I, of course, this is just the vector, well, 1, 0, or 1, 0, depending on how you like to write your vectors. Similarly, J. We're looking at 0, 1, or if you prefer, 0, 1. Generally, we're going to stick to angle bracket notation for, for calculus. If you're taking more of a linear algebra perspective, you probably use column vectors. Most of the time, we're going to use the angle vectors. Um, and, and so the other thing you could do, of course, if you like using the angle vector notation, is you could always write this as p of x, y, and q of x, y. So you could write it like that. Um, similarly, in R3, the same sort of thing, except now we're dealing with functions of three variables. And we have vectors, which are three-dimensional. So we'll have something that looks like p times i, q, and these are now functions of x, y, and z, times j. And then r, x, y, z times k. Right? Now, the, the important thing to keep in mind with your vector fields is notice that you have in R2, you have two variables, and you have two components, right? In R3, three variables and one, two, three components, right? So the, the kind of the main requirement that distinguishes vector fields from other sorts of vector valued functions that you might consider is that the number of components in your vector has to equal the number of variables, right? So if you're, if you're looking at vector fields in R2, right, then you're dealing with points from R2 and the vectors also live in R2. Right? In R3, we're, t we're taking points from R3 and we're producing vectors that live in R3. So this is not like, for example, uh, a, a vector parameterization for a curve where you take an input which is in R1 and you have an output which is in either R2 or R3. Right? Um, here the, the dimension for, for the domain and the codomain has to be the same. Um, with, I guess, the other, you know, the other catch is that the input here we think of as a point, the output is a vector. Um, we, we usually allow ourselves to blur the lines a little bit right between points and vectors. We, we tend to abuse notation in this way. Um, so where it's convenient, right, and we, we, we do this all the time with curves, right? So if you think about, um, if you think about curves, right, and we're going to be talking a lot about curves soon. Um, so we usually write, and this is just kind of an aside. It's not quite 
dealing with vector fields yet. But typically what we'll write is we'll write something like this. We'll, we'll write R of, of t is x of t i y of t j and then z of t k. So we often write this as a vector valued function, right? But then when you kind of, when you think about the curve, when you view the curve, when you picture it, you, you kind of view it as, well, you know, you have your, your coordinate system, so your three-dimensional coordinate system. And we think of a curve as a set of points, right? So we think of, okay, yeah, here's my curve, my curve C in space, right? Um, and so we view it as a set of points, even though we express the curve, we express the parameterization in terms of a vector. But there's that usual identification, which is that, well, for any point on the curve, you know, you have the, the position vector pointing to it, right? So your, your R of t is that position vector. Um, so you'll, you'll find that we tend to do this a fair amount when we're talking about vector fields. Um, we jump back and forth a little bit between, between points in R3 versus vectors in R3. Um, and sometimes we kind of, you know, as it's convenient, if it's convenient to think of something as a point, we'll think of it as a point. If it's convenient to think of it as a vector, we'll think of it as a vector. Um, and we kind of allow ourselves this flexibility. And, you know, usually this doesn't lead to confusion, right? Um, now, the way that you kind of, uh, the way that you sort of picture these things, um, The way that you picture a vector field is that you tend to draw the vector so we draw the tail of so so a particular vector so let's say you know x naught y naught z naught you draw the tail at the point x naught y naught um, Z naught. That's typically what you'll see. Um, so you might get something that looks like maybe something that looks like this. So here, here's an example in R2. Um, so we might have something like um, R. So typically when we're doing vector calculus, the letter R, um, it tends to get reserved for, well, similarly, I, I guess it's similar here, right? R tends to be always a position vector. Right, um, so r of x y is is x y. Right, over here we think of it as a function of a single variable, which is that you know we're defining x y z as functions of t. We're 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 parameterizing our curve, whereas here the input is a point x y, and the output is the vector that that um, you know the position vector for that point. Right, so basically what you do is is you know at a at a given point in the plane, right. Rather than drawing the position vector from the origin to that point, what you do is you, you put the tail at the point, right? And so you start getting some idea for what the vector field looks like, right? Uh, if you're closer in, vectors should be shorter. If you're further out, the vectors should be longer, right? Um, and I, I mentioned already in class that uh, th these are not objects that I expect you to draw by hand. Um, vector fields are very much something that should be drawn by a computer. So it's, um, it, it, it's time consuming to draw it by hand and you always end up with a jumbled mess no matter how hard you try, right? Um, there are, there are some conventions that computers tend to use to draw these to make them look a little bit better. You'll find some of these discussed in the textbook. Um, one of the things that a lot of the software will do is, is in fact, rather than putting the tail at the point, they, uh, a lot of the programs will actually center the vector on the point. Um, so they'll put the middle of the vector at that point. Uh, some of them will indicate the magnitude of the vector not by a length but by a thickness of the vector, thickness of the arrow, because you generally don't want things to get too long, right? Um, and, and usually they tend to rescale the vectors by a certain amount just to keep the length small so you don't have too many overlapping vectors, right? 
as soon as you start getting vectors overlapping and lying on top of each other, it ends up looking like a terrible mess and, and, and nobody really um, likes to deal with it anymore. So, so this is the basic idea for vector fields. I'm not going to try to draw too many here on the board because um, most of those attempts are going to end in failure. And you have access to all kinds of good software programs that will do this for you. So really, if you want to, if you want to get a good idea of, of you know, some intuition for vector fields, what they look like, um, what you can do with them, you should go um, find one of the various programs that you can access online, one of the free programs, and uh, just start plotting some vector fields, see what happens. Okay? Um, so I think we're going we're gonna to leave it at here for the intro. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to start talking about um, kind of differential calculus for vector fields. So we're going to talk about derivatives of vector fields and how some of those things tie together before we get into the integration. <laughs>